Well, let's uh, return to our top story now. And the United States, having announced it will no longer consider Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank as illegal. Now, the, the move reverses nearly a half a century of American foreign policy. Let's bring in Moen Rabani, who is a senior fellow over at the Institute for Palestinian Studies based in Beirut. And he joins me now from, from, from Amsterdam. Uh, Moen, good to have you on the show. Now, after the U.S.'s announcement recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital, and then subsequently the Golan Heights situation, is it at all surprising to you what we're hearing from the U.S. administration? No, not at all, and for several reasons, among which I would add that the U.S. has also ceased to consider the West Bank and the Gaza Strip as occupied territory. And um, it was always expected that the period um, uh, between the Israeli elections and the upcoming U.S. presidential elections would be one of maximum danger, in which the worst instinct of this um, increasingly extreme U.S. administration would be unleashed. But even seen in broader perspective, the 1978 State Department legal opinion you refer to does not characterize settlements as illegal, but rather as merely inconsistent with international law. And in the intervening several decades, the U.S. has, in practice, done everything it can to not only support Israel's uh, colonial settlement enterprise, but also to shield it from any form of international accountability. Um, so yes, Pompeo is a religious fanatic. Yes, um, the U.S. ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, routinely refers to the West Bank as Judea and Samaria, and so on. Um, and so I do think much responsibility can be blamed on this specific administration, but we also have to see it in a broader historical context. And in many ways, it is a logical culmination mm -hmm. of half a century mm -hmm. of U.S. policy towards the Israeli occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Okay, so you see it's sort of a, a natural progression in, in the policy. Um, now, you, you specialize in, in the Arab-Israeli conflict. I'm wondering what your take is uh, when it comes to this latest decision affecting the, uh, the dynamics on the ground, because uh, you've tied it to the elections, both in Israel, because those elections are not resolved, and the U.S. elections are more than 330 days out. I don't think the relationship between this latest announcement and the potential for yet another Israeli parliamentary election is irrelevant. Um, I think that's certainly there, but I also would be um, uh, quite wary of overstating any connection in, in the context that, yes, Netanyahu is already claiming credit for this. Yes, it does increasingly look like there will be another round of Israeli elections and Netanyahu will be able to deploy this as demonstrating his um, purportedly unique capacity to keep the U.S. on side and so on. But at the same time, I think it's also fair to say um, that a significant majority of Israeli voters have already made up their minds about Netanyahu. So in the sense that regardless of what he does or doesn't do, it's not going to change their mind. He's an extremely polarizing figure, and those who support him will be in his camp regardless of what he does, and those who oppose him are unlikely to be swayed by um, uh, U.S. announcements like the one we saw yesterday. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's talk international reaction briefly. European countries have come out uh, to condemn this decision, as they have in the past, but in reality, how much effect is this really going to have? That's, I think, the crucial point that you just raised, and um, words are effectively meaningless and entirely meaningless if shorn from action. Um, you know, just rubbing your hands and saying, oh, how terrible, while you're, for example, as is the case with the European Union, Israel's single largest trade partner, and doing absolutely nothing um, to meaningfully confront further Israeli um, uh, colonial expansion in the West Bank, is, to put it politely, um, somewhat hypocritical. I mean, the key issue here is Israeli impunity in its dealings with the Palestinians and complete lack of accountability for its actions towards the Palestinians. Mm. And if those who are in a position 
to um, do something about this, for all intents and purposes, do nothing, their words carry very little weight when they comment about the actions of other parties. All right. Moin Rabani, we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you very much for joining us here on Territory World. I do appreciate it.